So welcome everybody. Welcome to the lecture number 13 of the deep learning course. In this session, we are going to discuss about some of the regularization techniques for the neural network. So initially, I would discuss something about the regularization, that what is the regularization and why it is needed. And then we would see some of the techniques that are very common uh, into the neural networks. So let us start our discussion. So first thing um, that I wanted to discuss uh, right now is this, that uh, this particular graph has already came to you earlier, where actually uh, I have plotted this uh, uh, the, some things that uh, on one side, for example, in the x-axis, there is a training error and on the other side, there is a testing error. So underlying assumption is this, that let's assume that you have a database, you have a database D and you have divided the database into two parts where there is some training part and testing, testing part. And uh, you are doing something because you want to learn. So you using this particular part, you are going to do something. I'm not, not right now specifying that what to do, but you are doing something to build a model. And then that model you are going to use on the testing data, that what is the accuracy on that. So one side I'm going to say that uh, training error is high and another side I'm going to tell that testing error is high. So I can divide this space into, by this, by, uh, by just uh, going, having two extremes, I can say that there are two different uh, uh, parts. We can say that one part there is a, when the training, training error is high, training error is low, testing error is high and testing error is low. So this these four quadrants now you can understand so initially what would happen that if you if i would start the start learning with respect to a database one as i told you that uh, our underlying assumption is this that there is a database i start learning with that so what do i expect that training error would be high because system is not trained so training error would be high and what about testing error it is also going to be high so most probably i am going to be into this particular scenario that i would be somewhere here that where training and testing error both are going to be high. So uh, because I have uh, and I am here, why I am here? Because I have initialized my weights. I have some weights, weights on this particular weight. My system actually um, based on this particular weight, my system is going to um, do the classification or required machine learning task. And I can see that let's assume that my system has some kind of error and I'm here. So if you are here, then what would you do? Because you have started something. Now you have to change this parameter. How can you change this parameter? So you know that the only thing is going to be that you, you find out that what is the last function that is being parameterized on this particular J. So let's suppose that there is some function. That particular function, uh, you, you uh, actually, your objective would be to find out the derivative of this particular quantity with respect to the W. And then you can see that the W I'm going to change using W minus alpha time this derivative term. So in this way, you are going to change something. If you are going to change this thing, what is going to happen? Error is going to uh, reduce or increase. So the error, if you have an error, it is, is it going to reduce or increase? Can you, can anybody tell? Error is going to reduce or increase? Uh, anything could anything could be possible yeah so reduce it it would reduce because because we have uh, utilized this uh, the concept of the gradient and grade we would are actually changing the parameter in such a way so that it must reduce so however when you are here you can change the parameter in such a way so that you can go into any particular direction so you can if you go into this particular direction means what your training error is also increasing testing error is also increasing this is not a possibility because we're not going to do so if can you go here can you go into this particular direction? You, can you change your parameters so, can, so that you, you are going into this particular direction? Again, no, because what is going to happen that if you if you move into this particular direction, your error is uh, error, training error is going to increase this much. And this is not possible because this uh, change that you are going to do, that you are going to do on the training data itself. So this is again not possible. So what is the what are the possibilities? The possibilities are this that either you go into this particular direction, this particular direction, this particular direction, or this particular direction. Okay. So can I ask that is it possible to go into this particular direction? And uh, before asking this, let me ask that if somehow you go uh, you go into this particular direction, somehow you go into this particular direction, whether it is good or not. Can you tell me? And what does it mean? It means that training it is not reducing, but testing it is reducing. Is it good? You, you definitely it is good. 
so because we want this so ultimately whatever you are learning on the training thing it is not going to be used in any way your model need to perform on the testing data itself if if its accuracy is going to be better uh, means that if your error is going to reduce if you move into this particular direction your testing error is going to reduce how much this much okay training error is not reducing because you can see that on both the places it's uh, it is not reducing but it is fine for us okay we can go into this particular direction again my question is can we do it answer is no why because using this derivative method i would not proceed if my error is not going to reduce so this is not possibility so uh, these are the only possibilities on which we can do all these things are possible okay can i move into the all this direction or is there any also there is some some catch and i cannot move into any particular direction actually the answer is this actually i can move in any particular direction even this direction is also possible for me okay i can move into this particular direction also why because if i am moving into this particular direction ultimately my training error is any very reducing and this is the only guiding factor for me to go ahead because this particular thing gives you this thing only on the training data your error is going to reduce so you can move in this particular direction also means this particular movement is also possible once again let me just quickly remove this part and tell you that this movement into this particular direction is also possible okay because i am going to use this particular kind of uh, framework this is also possible so is it a, is it a good thing answer is no is it a good thing no this is not a right thing to go to do so how, how can i prevent it because if anything is possible then how can i prevent going into this particular direction the idea is this that whenever a database is given to use and uh, as i told you that you are going to divide into train and test part you also keep some part of the training for example maybe um, if it is if you are dividing into uh, 80 20 so 20% is the test data and 80% is the train data here you say that 10% i am going to have here for the uh, separate and 70% data for the training so here by yourself you say that okay i am not going to use the complete data only this portion i am going to use for the training 10% <laughs> i am going to keep secret so when i train my model on this particular data this particular part is called what you have you may have heard about this validation validation so using this kind of this using this validation part now you can see that if i if my because you have taken the step using this particular data and it says that go into this particular go into this particular direction and you have measured that okay i am fine because my training error training error is reducing but on the validation data if you uh, if you evaluate the same thing you would be seeing that your error is going to increase what does it mean that this particular framework the learning framework you are in is not good so you must change something maybe uh, learning parameter maybe you have to change your uh, hyper parameters um, essentially you have to change your hyper parameter in such a way so that you don't go into this particular direction make sense so this is the important um, this is the importance of the validation data all right so as i told you that in this particular setting when i am going to use the validation set also so it is not possible for me now now i have said myself going into this particular direction so what other things are there so either you go into this particular direction or you the you, you can go into this particular direction both the directions are possible so can you tell me that which one is better out of these two possibilities which one is better uh so you can see that if you are for example if you are into using this particular one so into let's let's just assume that in one step you are going to improve this much but the second one is actually going to improve lesser na the second one uh, you can see that uh, that first one has how much improvement this much improvement it has this much improvement and the second one has only this much improvement so looks like that uh, this one is a more strong model looks like that this is going to be more strong more a strong model because it is reducing your error fast okay so you want this particular thing but is it a good model again there is a there is a there is a different perspective on this particular problem and again you have to see from the perspective of how your train testing error is going to reduce it is more strong once again it is more strong model everybody uh, everybody agrees that this particular model is better model more strong model because it is reducing your things very fast but if you see from this uh, testing perspective you can see that your testing error is only reduced this much however the second one which were actually learning slow means it initially your error was reducing slowly you can see that it may be possible that on the testing it error is going to be 
uh, it, it either could uh, could reduce fast okay so this is a more simpler model so you can see that when you have because ultimately it is going to be simpler model because it is reducing your our assumption is this that this particular model this particular model has less uh, reduction into the training error so it is a simpler model so the simpler model may be better on the testing data makes sense so you have seen that uh, into the previous discussion also we have actually thought that if you if you do this kind of uh, improvement and you keep training what this kind of curve actually you actually are going to see okay but if you go with this what is going to happen you are going to be you are going to be into this particular scenario once again two learning curves we have seen the one learning curve that we have created using using more uh one minute sorry one learning curve you that you have created using a model that ha that has a high that has a more um, power this and another has a maybe the lesser power and you can see that this particular one has if you just uh, see in terms of the how much uh, global minima you can achieve you can see that the second one this the one that one that was actually general uh, would be able to achieve more <coughs> sorry more uh, better um, uh, this uh, more more better performance because it's uh, error is going to be even lower. Sir, why is the learning curve taken to be a parabola? Like, why is it rising up again? Uh, it is not a training one only. Na, it is with training and testing both are actually plotted. This particular place on which we are, in one side there is training, and other side there is testing. So uh, when you reduce the training error, you expect that every time your testing error is going to be going to reduce, but it is not going to happen. We have seen earlier also that uh, we have also seen that what happens that training error goes like this, that it is uh, every time it is going to decrease. But after some time, your testing error goes high. Why it happens? We have seen earlier that it happens because uh, because your model is very much now your model becomes very good to what? very good to the data that you have seen so it becomes very bad to the things which are actually unknown so mm -hmm. using this yes. kind of behavior if you plot these two things these two values with respect to each other you are going to see this kind of behavior okay so yes got it okay okay thank you so uh, so this uh, this is the scenario and generally when you start as i told you that you would be here but you don't want to be here you want to change the parameter in such a way so that you can improve best thing is this that uh, you you come somehow here where you say that even if the training error is high your testing error is right but there is no way that can tell you that how to come over here so you do something by which you actually you start into crawl into this particular direction and ultimately you reach this particular place which is actually the first rise here you want to reach because there is no way that can tell that how can you reach over there so this is the bus this is the worst place the where you don't want to be and uh, this is the bad place because actually it says that and you know that what does it mean if you are here what does it mean it is overfitting means you are very good on to your your training error is low but your testing error is high you don't want to be here so so low training error comes with the risk of overfitting as we have seen that low training error low training error comes with the risk of overfitting when you are going to reduce this uh, the idea is only this that you can go into both the direction whether you are going into this direction or this direction you may not be always aware so based on your setting sometimes you end up reaching this particular place only so you have to take the help of what take the help of validation validation data to to move into the right particular into the right direction all right so so what we have seen here that simplified models could be a better one that actually can give you the better accuracy so a um, few few classes back few lectures back we were actually talking about the regularization and uh, and we were also discussing about the logistic regression thing and you know that what is the logistic regression that uh, uh, the idea was this uh, that um, that let's assume that you have a model you have a model and you are going to provide x and what you get you get y hat because uh, let's assume that you want to find out the value of y but actually you got the y hat because whatever the system is going to tell i am going to put a hat on that to differentiate between the actual value and uh, that particular value you get y hat so what our assumption is that our assumption is this that this particular if my model is trained uh, into the correct way these two values are going to be the same how they differ 
I don't know that that's why we define some kind of loss function on that and we say that it is a y minus uh, y hat minus y and uh, you you somehow um, this could be any kind of function maybe logistic function that can say that uh, y log y uh, plus uh, 1 minus y log 1 minus y so any kind of function so i think the function is this 1 minus y log 1 minus y so this this kind of logistic function or any kind of uh, required function you can decide over here so uh, so so what i wanted to mention is this that based on the based on your parameter on your data if you find out that how good your model is you can come up these kind of equation general this is general setting that you actually gen generally these kind of values you have into the previous classes we have also discussed about this that's what happens that if you if you are developing a neural network circuit and let's assume that the neural network circuit neural network circuit is such that that for example this particular weight is very high 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 let's assume that there are many x you are going to feed over here and y you are going to put here and if this particular let's assume that this particular connection has a very high value as compared to the other values which are available here similarly here 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 so if you want to find out that what is the output that you are going to get so definitely it is going to be only dependent upon these kind of activations so other things becomes very uh, second one reduces the testing error more i think i think i missed this question there is there was something on chat so uh, so you you actually understand that if if some weights are very high across the layers so they actually take uh, take complete um, uh, they hijack this particular network and the, all other connection becomes useless so you don't want the weights to be very high so that the network becomes appropriate and for that the logistic regression su suggests that you can apply uh, this particular uh, extra term you can put this particular extra term into your equation you say that the same function that you are actually earlier using with along with this particular function you are going to put one more term that one that term is what is that particular term there is a there is a lambda term that tells that uh, that how much importance you want to give to this particular quantity divided by 2m that actually is a uh, normalizer with respect to all the data item and then you say that you are going to see that what is the say, what is the square of all the weights and this uh, this value should be actually small so this value should be small means what if the summation of this particular quantity is, is small this is only possible if the all the values are actually small it's only possible if the all the values are is only small so if i modify my last function using this particular formulation i say that this is the regularized equation any problem on that yes so this particular formulation says that however i however i want this quantity to be lower because this is actually related to my classification my classification should be better but this quantity i also want to be lower any problem on that yes yes or no so here my objective would be so you know that um, how can how can you uh, change your weight so you you for example if you have the weight w so you find out based on this w what is on the data so i'm writing into the different way i'm telling that if your last function is parameterized with respect to the w and on the given data you want to find out that what is the last so I, I'm telling that if you change this w to w dash on the same data, you si try to see that what is the new loss, and this new loss should be lesser than the previous one. Any problem in that? So I'm telling that along with this, I'm going to add one more term. Okay. So this particular term, just just for the sake of uh, just for the sake of brevity, I can say that this particular term you can represent. For example, this particular part you can represent by saying W W transpose, because what is this? You because you know that W is equal to W zero, W one, W two. These it is going to be a vector only, and if I say that a square, what does it mean? It it means that W zero square plus W one square plus dot 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 W and square. It is the summation of all these terms. So it is equivalent to the same thing that if it is a vector, it is a you find out that what is the dot product with respect to its transpose. It is going to be the same thing. So sometimes instead of writing this particular complete equation, I can write what I can write. I can bravely write W transpose W. I have a question for you. Everybody understand this particular part? Yes or no? First, you let me know that. If you have any question, you please ask. 
everybody is okay sir how do we find the regularization parameter so we just adjust it so that that term is small lambda yes a lambda okay again again um, i think we have discussed when i was discussing at that particular part that this is again going to be a very very difficult part to find out so if you put it zero means what that you don't care about this particular term if you yes. take infinite means what you are not uh, you don't want to minimize this particular quantity your whole objective would be to optimize this particular quantity only so finding out becomes very difficult so sometimes some beta distribution people use to find out the value between zero and something Achha, and they okay. yes, got it they, they change those things over there to find out the better value mm -hmm. again being a system parameter you have to do like that so yeah in any any more question no no okay now ha now i have a question the, so everybody understand this part that i have why i have put this particular part over here to reduce the value of w okay so if i want to reduce the value of w i have put this particular formula so i i have a, another proposal if what if what if i say that lambda upon 2m into mod mod of w i put this thing so what is the problem will this also work yes or no what is the problem will this work yes it is also going to work because uh, i am going to add an extra term and uh, this extra term is going to be um, positive only so i want to reduce this thing. how many of you think that it is going to work yes or no everybody no what is writing what is the problem please write yes or no what is the problem okay do you understand this so this is also going to work but there is a big problem let me tell you there is a very big problem and the problem is this actually what happens now so you know that these are all these are w's w0 w1 w2 w3 okay so i am not sure about that how these values are let's assume that they have the different values okay they have the different value these are the values i want to minimize this particular quantity i want to minimize the summation of these quantities okay my objective is to minimize the summation of this quantity so when this quantity can be minimized this quantity can be minimized if all the w's w i become zero make sense yes or no if i have two choices number one try to understand if i have two choices that this particular quantity is this and this particular quantity is this okay two quantities i have if i have two quantities and i given a chance to minimize them and and let's assume that i have i have two possibilities that i can reduce this particular to by this quantity and i can reduce this by this quantity which one i would prefer there is no incentive on that i can do anything okay so i would reduce this quantity and then what would happen so this quantity becomes this much and this quantity becomes this much and then again if i if i do the same thing let's assume that i have the this particular thing that i can do this particular change which i would do there is no incentive in doing any anything special so i can reduce again the second from here itself so what would happen this value becomes so this this w becomes zero it it would become zero and this quantity would become this much uh, are you able to see that so if i want to minimize this thing when the when the summation is term is given to me it is going to be it is going to settle when the values become zero but just see the different part that let's assume that uh, let's assume and uh, let me give you i I'm, i'm not sure that i would be able to just fully justify please help me to do this let's assume w0 w1 w2 w3 these three variables are there this is the value this is the value this is the value this is the value okay let's this these are the values so if i want to find out can you give me what is the square of this quantity square of quantity would be this what is the square of this quantity it would be this what is the square of this quantity it would be this is what is the square of this quantity it is going to be this it's not please do please know that it is not going to be uh, it is not going to be the double okay it is going to be multiplied by the same quantity so if i got a chance to reduce something for example if the same amount i want to reduce i want to reduce here and i want to reduce here so it would be nice that if i once again once again let me tell you 
I have done a mistake. So, so let's assume that I get a chance to reduce this thing by this quantity and this thing by this quantity, same quantity. So whether I would like to reduce this quantity or this quantity, W0 or W1, can you tell me? Because if I reduce W W0, so this much I am going to reduce. But if I reduce this much into W1, I would be able to reduce this much into the original quantity. Can you see this? So say even I am going to modify the same amount, it is going to give me more advantage when I am going to modify this thing, W1. So out of multiple values, it would the system is always going to reduce the thing which has actually higher value. Okay, and the, and if, if a value is smaller, it would not like to modify that particular thing. So ultimately, what is going to happen that all the W's are going to have some values, very small, and it is not going to penalize. There is no importance into penalize only single quantity. It is this is very important thing. Okay, that's why we mostly put the square term over here. Make sense? Okay, but I was not talking into this particular setting. Our setting is this, that I have a neural network, okay? So weights are here also, weights are here also, everywhere there are weights, everywhere there are weights, okay? So if I if I apply this particular formula where I'm going to find out the summation of the quantity, it is not going to work. Because multiple, at multiple places there are values, no? So this particular quantity actually that I wanted to talk about, so here we, sometime we put a, uh, some fancy words over here. We say that it is going to be Frobenius norm, and it says that ultimately I want to find out the square of all these quantities. So for every layer, there is one more summation term that says that on every layer you find out that what is the weight over there, all the possible weight into that particular layer. You want you want to find out that what is this particular quantity, and this particular thing is, is going to be represented by what that for all the things which are there into the layer. Make sense? Earlier the formula was this, that you are only finding out the summation of this quantity, but now I'm going to say that with respect to the layer, you have to actually apply a summation term and for all the layers, you have to find out this particular quantity. Make sense? All right, so um, so now if you understand, you understand that there is a, there is a weight uh, a square term. With respect to every layer, you are going to find out the summation and you want to modify the weight. How can you modify the weight? So if you want to modify any particular weight, let's assume that WL, there is some there's some weight WL you want to modify. So you take the previous one, alpha time, what is the change into this particular quantity? So on this particular quantity, you what you find out that what is the, uh, what is the change into this particular quantity with respect to W? Make sense? Okay, so if I wanted to find out that what is the change, so can you tell me that, let me just write like this, that del upon del WL with respect to any W, if I want to find out that uh, what is the change. So can I write like this, that this particular differentiation is going to be inside and it is going to give you some differentiation with respect to this term and some differentiation with respect to this term. So whatever change that I have to do, this particular part, okay, DW, whatever change I have to put, put over here has actually two parts, okay. One part that is coming from the back propagation, back propagation and another term that is coming from, that is coming from here, okay. Make sense? Yes or no? Can you help me to find out that particular term? Again, you can see that uh, this particular term, you know that, uh, you, I, I'm not sure about this, that how, uh, uh, what I should say, I should say that I am not bothering upon this because it is coming from the back propagation. And we have actually in the previous classes see, seen that there is a settled formula by this we can find out. But the second part, if you want to find out the derivative here, so can you help me to find out the derivative? This particular thing is what? It is it is summation of a different type of w's, a square of that w, then w1 square, w11 square, w12 square, w13 square, dot dot dot. All the w's square is there. There would be one term, this particular term would also be there inside somewhere. Here inside, this particular term would also be there somewhere. For example, wl, 
part which I am going to find out this thing. It would also be inside the th same same equation. Am I right or not? Yes, yes or no? Everybody okay? That this particular summation term would uh, would be of this particular kind, where inside there would be one term of this particular kind also, where it it contains the square. So what happens that actually this square means what? Two multiplied by W L. This is what my output is going to be. Two multiplied by W L. Okay, because if I find out the derivative with respect to the W L, it is going to be this quantity only. Yes or no? Because these things becomes constant and they becomes they vanishes. Uh, then then there is a lambda upon two M is there. So lambda upon two M is again going to be multiplied with this quantity. I can say that lambda upon M W L. This is what actually I am going to get from this particular second part. Lambda upon M into W L. Yes or no? Who is telling yes? Any yes? Yes. Okay. So, uh, so what we have discussed that this particular, this particular part, this particular part, in this particular part, this particular part is going to be something coming from the back propagation plus lambda upon n m time w l. Makes sense. So, how can update it? How how this formula would get up, updated? We can write the formula by this, but w l is equal to w l minus alpha time alpha time this particular whole quantity. This particular quantity, am I right? So you can see that uh, W L is here also. W L is here also. So you can combine these two terms by how, how can you can combine because alpha you can take inside. So I'm doing a lot more bad things. So I can take this particular, I can take this alpha inside. I can say that alpha lambda, and uh, then uh, this is the back propagation. This goes away, and the minus sign comes over here. Minus sign comes over here, so, and then since this is W L and this is W L, I can write one minus alpha lambda upon M into W L minus alpha time whatever is coming from the back propagation. Back propagation. This is what my formula is. Everybody okay with this formula? Can I write the same formula into this particular way? This is a very interesting formula. This is a name. Sometimes we call it. If I, this formula we call it as a weight decay. This formula is what is this formula? This formula is called weight decay. And what does it mean? That whatever is coming from the back propagation is coming from the back propagation, and there is a alpha time. It is multiplied by alpha. Then previous weight is actually multiplied by this because you can know you can by yourself see that there is an alpha. Alpha is a positive quantity. Lambda is a positive quantity. M is a positive quantity. Therefore, something. And these things are small constant, okay? The alpha and lambda is small constant, and m is a big number. So overall number is going to be very small. But one minus something, something, okay? So therefore, definitely weight is going to be reduced. Even uh, let's assume that when you are training your model and your model is perfect, at that time from back propagation nothing would be coming. You are not going to change this particular weight. But if you apply this particular weight uh, weight mechanism, your weight are going to reduce. Means weight are any way going to decrease if you if you train by this particular method so this particular method is called weight decay and uh, this is a this this uh, uh, this what this achieves that it does not uh, it actually regularize the parameter in such a way so that no weight is going to be high so how come it is going to give you the regularization so everybody are you okay with the weight weight decay what is what do i mean by weight decay if i ask this question that what is the weight decay understand do you understand that formula that what is the weight decay formula now why it is going to do the regularization so you know that the connections are get uh, weakened by this because you, its weight is going to be reduced so the network is go, going to be effectively less connected and therefore it becomes simple and the simple network means better network in terms of the generalization another intuition is this uh, that when the weights are lower the output of the unit is also lower what happens na for example if you have a, any any unit and and you are going to see the output of that particular neur neuron so if the weights are actually smaller if the weights are smaller so after multiplying whatever output you are going to get it is also going to be smaller 
and let's assume that um, without loss of generality we can assume that that output is going to be tan h function tan h function you have seen in, in this particular format minus 1 to 1 at the zero it gives what this particular thing so output is also very small but you know that these kind of functions sigma id and all other functions becomes very much uh, very much linear into this particular place okay they becomes very much linear and what do i mean by linear even if the if your network is very large and these neurons becomes linear in their behavior what does it mean that this big network actually reduces to the small network it has a lesser power however it is not going to happen you know that um, some some uh, some weights are going to be high and low uh, low and therefore uh, non linearity would be preserved but because of this gives an intuition that you can see that if the values are going to be smaller you are going to get the output into this particular range and that's why it looks like that the network is going to behave the simpler and if it is required if more data is there is there if more training you are going to do to ultimately it is going to be going to uh, be better in itself make sense so our understanding is this that the overall network tends to become linear and this is our bias that we want to make it uh, this is our bias that we want to put into the system that if the network is linear it is going to be simplified another method we have seen one method another method of the regularization is very uh, very out of box and very uh, what we say that we can say that a destructive kind of method that says that let's assume that this is what your network is let's assume that this is what your network is how many layers are there input layer then first layer second layer third layer and fourth layer four layer network i have so actually this method is called drop out and it actually what it does shut down shut down some of the units randomly so i don't know so maybe randomly i shut down this shut down this shut down this so what do i mean by shut down so by shut down i mean that whenever you are how can you train okay you provide some input you find out that what is the output by this output you are going to Uh, by by this you output you see that what is the what is the error what is the derivative and with respect to the derivative let's assume that you want to modify this particular weight so how much you have to change based on all these computation you can find out how much you have to change but if i have shut down that particular unit because i don't know that maybe because of some reason i have shut down this thing or this thing then this weight i'm not going to update because the unit has been shut down so sometime you are not going to update few things so let's assume that i have in this particular example i have shut down this 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 and this so what would happen all the connection between them are going to be going to vanish so network becomes simple can you see this very simple network where only these these are the connections so if you compare with the previous one this was a network where fully connected network it was and now if you compare this with this you can see that it, it is a very simpler network can everybody can everybody see the lines which are there yes it is a way simpler network uh and one one very important thing that you are going to achieve by this thing that uh, let's assume that this weight was very high okay so this time when i am going to into the next time when i am this time when i am going to when i have actually randomly shut down this thing so at that time i cannot update this particular weight so maybe some other weight becomes bigger so uh so ultimately what happens that the network cannot rely any specific connection so there are multiple connections so earlier maybe because this value was very high network was actually every time to compute the things it was using this particular way only but now it cannot be possible because uh, because this particular thing has been shut down and we have to update the weight somewhere else and if that weight becomes larger then this actually loses its supremacy once again let me tell you that at the time of training i am going to apply the regular this drop out regularization at the time of the testing when i am going to test then all the things would be available okay please don't get confused at the time of testing when i i'm feeding something i want to find out the output at that time all the connection would be there at the time of training only i am going to reduce remove some of the connections okay okay um uh, if you do do this thing so this uh, graph i have shown you multiple number of time that i was telling that this is a, what is this this is a last landscape so with respect to the different weights this is what the loss i have but if i apply drop out the last landscape becomes this 
very important paper multiple time i was saying this i was putting this that information but the first time i'm going to see this particular thing that this last land landscape becomes what this and now you can see the by yourself that if you start anywhere for example if you start here most probably you are going to drop into this particular place if you start here most probably you are going to fall on this particular place only few places you it would be difficult for example you are here you can drop here but again it is fine that you it is not a very bad place because now you cannot stuck into these places if you are stuck over here you can go there so this is a very interesting kind of paper that actually talks about this make sense and we have mentioned this this is visualizing the, visualizing the last landscape of neural network this is again the paper came out in 2018 another kind of uh, regularization people talk about that is <laughs> that is called the early stopping and uh, early st stopping is again that uh, regularization why it is a regularization because on the training you can see that if you keep training your error is going to reduce because of this setting that you are going to utilize uh, gradient descent your error is going to reduce but on the testing one what happens that your error after some time it, it is starts increasing on the testing one so you actually analyze that what is the what is the what is the slope at uh, what is the what is the slope in this particular area and then you see that what is the slope into this particular area and then you say that looks like that this particular point is enough and after that maybe sometime i should stop at this particular place so you can stop at some uh, sufficient uh, uh, after sufficient amount of uh, error re reduction has been achieved so at least stopping since you are not training you are making your system uh, not good not very good on the training data again it is a going to be regularize your system and this is the another method of regularization uh, another one more uh, method could be that uh, sometime what happens that you know that why once again let me tell you that let's assume that this is the data okay on this data this is the training part this is a test if your accuracy is very high on this training part uh, and it is very bad on this particular part so let me pick some example let's assume that on this example my system is going to be wrong okay so what i can tell i can say that put these examples inside the training so what you say that into the training you you put uh, you put these example how can i draw you keep this thing and put it here so by this what happens that you are actually increasing the training data you are increasing the training data into this particular system so if you again start learning what would happen that on these things the system was already good on this thing system was bad but now i have trained on this the system becomes good on these things also so if you increase the data if you increase the data what is going to happen if you increase the training data what is going to happen your system is going to be better this is another kind of regularization where i am going to say that i am going to increase the data sometimes what happens that you cannot directly have the data so there is a technique called data augmentation that tells that you can increase using these kind of methods and it could be for example if this is the image and you can flip it to this particular image another image and you can say that i am going to do kind of zooming uh, this is the flipping then there is a rotation rotation i have not shown you can rotate this image a bit you can scale here you can see that image is scale translate if the item for example on the image face was here you can put the face over here you can change the location of the face deform for example horizontal or the vertical deformations you can apply small deformation it's not going to be radical kind of deformation small kind of deformation you can change them by this uh, you can get more images more training samples so if you increase more training sample what is going to happen that your system is going to be most probably it is going to be better okay however in uh, as as in all the cases when you increase the number of samples what is going to happen your system is going to be slow into learning because number of examples are high so in in one iteration it is going to take more time so there there comes a another technique that uh, that can help you to speed up your training and the technique is called the normalization data normalization what do i mean by this so let's assume that only two classes are there and uh, let's assume the data is like this okay let's assume the data is like this let's assume that this is what the data is so if i closely analyze this data you can see that on one side it this data has this much of variance and on another side this data has only this much of variance if this variance is say a this variance may be 2a higher variance into the other side so 
if you try to draw the last contours with respect to these kind of data it would be something like this uh, it would be it would be something like this okay it would be something like this so if you move on the last contour maybe you move into this particular direction you take the steps over here and it becomes very less to reach it takes lot of time to reach this particular local minima but if you do one thing that is called the normalization and what do i mean by normalization that you do a min max normalization what is the min max normalization you you take the what is the maximum value you take what is the minimum value you find out the difference and you multiply each value value if whatever for example there is there is this value okay this value okay i say that v so v is equal to v multiplied by what uh, divided by uh v max minus v min so if you divide by this particular quantity and you subtract for v minus v min v minus v min v min if you transform this equation this data using this particular formula where i'm going to tell that this is v max and this particular quantity is v min so what would happen the maximum value would be what maximum would be one the maximum value would be one and minimum value would be zero so in the in the all the directions if you do like this so your data would be only confined to a, a small region where all the things uh, all the axes have the same treatment so what would happen that this uh, contour now would become circular and if it is a circular so most probably you are going to reach to the particular minimum very fast Make sense. So these are the some of the techniques that people utilize to do the normalize the thing. So that's all for today. Thank you very much for joining this.